Welcome to part 21 of this series where I talk about a specific family branch of mine, walk you through what I've learned about them, what I haven't been able to learn about them, and more importantly, how I got to the conclusions that I did. Now, the reason that I've been doing this series, besides for showing off all the findings that I've been able to acquire, is to kind of show you folks the diversity of each specific line. Some lines you will find a ton of records and DNA matches and all sorts of things on. Others you'll find next to nothing. And in this episode, we're actually going to be having something of an anomaly when we're talking about my Reichert line because I know absolutely nothing about this line whatsoever. And when I say nothing, I really mean nothing. According to both the marriage and death certificates of my great-great-grandfather, Herman Cohn, his mother was named Fanny or Stephanie Reichert, and that's pretty much all I know about her is her name. Even when I looked through the Cohn-adjacent records that I was able to find, there was absolutely nothing about Herman's mother, and in fact, even the last name Reichert, which shows up quite a bit in Slovakia, there was no indication that any one Reichert family was the correct one. Apparently the surname means brave and powerful ruler in German, and it actually has the same origin as the last name or first name Richard, the English name Richard, and Reichert or Reichert. So I kind of know the meaning of the name, but it's a really common name. And like I said, there's just nothing like, I've gone through all the DNA matches adjacent to my Cohen line. I've gone through all of the online Slovakian records, everything. And there's just not a single branch or even twig that I can grab onto as being, you know, potentially a lead on this family. Originally, I had debated whether or not even to do an episode on this line because, well, there wasn't really going to be anything to talk about. So I wanted to take this opportunity to actually delve into some of the philosophy of being a genealogist and what learning nothing about my Reichert line can tell us about what it takes to do research. Every once in a while, you'll run into a situation like this and that's completely fine. It's why as a researcher, I recommend taking the path of least resistance. Now, what this means is Anytime you're researching your various family branches or somebody else's family branches, you will eventually hit a dead end on all of them. But this is going to take a lot longer than you think. And if you're lucky, well, it might not even happen in your lifetime. It's just there are a limited amount of records available. You need to take the ones that are the seemingly most impossible and understand that there may not be records available for this line. That doesn't mean you should give up on it, but what you should do is focus on the lines where you think you can still learn something. You always want to turn to the one that maybe you haven't fleshed out quite as much as you could have because all knowledge is cumulative. So if you take some time off from researching, it's going to help you in the long run. So even if in a couple of years you come back to this brick wall, you'll have accumulated different research tricks and you'll also have more records available online because over time the number of documents that are scanned and indexed can only grow. And the same thing goes for your family tree. Right now you have the fewest number of people on your family tree that you will ever have. People are going to have kids, you're going to discover more about different branches, and you just need to be patient and stick with it. It's okay to put something on the back burner and recognize that you can't just do this alone. Sometimes you're going to have to reach out to the archives locally and if you can't do that, then you're just going to have to wait unless you can think of another avenue to go down. So that's kind of why I wanted to talk about my Reichert line to show you folks that even someone who does genealogy 
professionally and who's learned a ton about all my different family branches, well, there are some branches that I know absolutely bupkis about and everybody's gonna have those on their family tree and you're not alone. So anyways, I hope this was informative to you. If you liked the episode or if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section down below and also be sure to follow me on social media. I've included links to both my Instagram and my Twitter. If you like this episode, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I post new episodes. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.